Okay, so we just finished row two and we're moving up to row three. So here on the graph, you can find row three. And on row three, we start with the blue. And then we have four grays. So we already have a blue loop on our crochet hook, so we don't need to change colors for the first block. Then you're going to go into the second stitch. And remember, I'm just going to show you again these vertical stitches. So with my tapestry needle, I'm just going to show you real quick. So here is a vertical stitch, and you're just going to grab the loop of the vertical stitch for your, when you make your, your Tunisian crochet stitch. And your vertical stitches are, they line up with the previous row vertically. So here's the first row's vertical stitch, here's the second row's vertical stitch, and the third one will go right above it. So here's a vertical stitch, here's a vertical stitch, and if you did it correctly and you, you're making your rows correctly, each vertical stitch will line up with the previous row and the color will correspond with your graph. So here we go. So we have the first loop and sometimes with a color change you'll notice that you may have a large gap right here. Here is not too bad. If you do have a large gap you can gently pull on that colors yarn. So I like the space that's there so I'm not going to pull on that yarn. You can drop your blue yarn and pick up your gray. So I'm not going to pull on the gray yarn but all you have to do is give a gentle tug on this yarn to bring the vertical stitches closer. But you'd want to be careful doing that because you may alter the size because then the stitches will be too close together which you don't want. So now we're going to go into the next vertical stitch from the second row. You're going to bring up a loop in the color that you want. So we want four of the gray colors. So I got one on there. Go into the next one. And sometimes I use my thumb to help the hook go through. Bring up a loop for your second. third, fourth. So now you can grab your graph again and you can see how the third row is corresponding. I have one blue and then I have four gray. Now I need two green. So my green is over here and it's still attached to the skein. So I'm going to get one of my handy clothes pins so that I can wind the green onto a clothes pin and then bring my green over where I need it. The other thing that I learned with this is you don't want to make it too tight if you want to open up the clothes pin. So I don't need to open my clothes pin too much, but that's just one thing to keep in mind as you're wrapping your excess yarn around the clothespin. So now my green yarn is freed up. So this yarn is attached to the skein of yarn. I'm going to go into the next stitch and then bring up a loop with my green yarn. And then I'm going to tie a knot with the yarn that's right next to it. And again, you don't need to pull real tight. You just want to have a good knot there. And then we need two of the green. So here, I'm just checking the brown to make sure that I have a good spacing with the brown. So you can give a gentle tug on the brown if you need to and then go into the vertical brown stitch. Just making sure I, have, I can see the stitches. And then bring up a loop with the green. And now we're ready to look at the graph again. 
and this time I need one blue so with the blue I can it's close enough to the the front stitch that I can drag it over so I'm going to drag over the blue to the next stitch and then you have to be careful here because you can see that there is this little loop between the two vertical stitches. You don't want to go into that loop. You want to go into the vertical loops and you can see the vertical loops because they're lined up with the previous rows vertical stitch. So they're all lined up. So you're going to go into the vertical stitch. So I have my blue yarn. I'm going to go into the vertical stitch and then bring up a loop with my blue colored yarn. Then I'm going to look at my graph again. I'm going to release my blue colored yarn from the clothespin. And then I could see that all of my vertical stitches are lining up like they're supposed to. And I have my blue. And now I'm going to bring in the, oh wait a minute, that's where I didn't see. So you have to keep track of that. So here you can see how I looked up here accidentally at four. So we actually are not blue. We're actually three brown. So that's something you have to keep in mind is that you have to keep track that you're on the right row. So now I'm going to go back and release the blue. So I'm going to keep these errors in so you can see what I do when I make an error. Sometimes errors happen. Go ahead and release the blue back to where it was. And I need three brown colored. So now let me just zoom in for you. So now I'm going to go into the same vertical stitch that I had the blue by error, drop the green, and then the brown is right there. So I'm going to pick up the brown and then bring up a loop with the brown. So this brown is still attached to a clothespin. And I need three browns, so I have one go into the next vertical stitch for your second brown next vertical, vertical stitch for the third brown now I'm going to bring in the yellow color so I'm going to actually this isn't a yellow color I'm going to use a coral color actually the coral I'll use here I'm going to look and see what color I want to use for this one and then I'll be right back. So since it looks orange on the graph, I'm going to use this Red Heart Super Saver Orange that I had in my stash. The color is Carrot if you like the color that I'm using. So now I'm going to go into that next stitch, drop my brown, and then I'm going to bring up the orange color and then I'm going to tie a knot so now I'm going to look at the graph and I'm looking at the right spot <laughs> Make sure you're looking at the right colors and then it looks like I have four greens that line up with the previous rows for green and then the two purple line up, the blue line up, and the grays line up. So all of those four next colors line up so I don't need to keep looking at the graph. I already know. So then I'm going to drop the orange and then here you can see that between the green there's a little bit of a gap so I'm going to pick up my green color and then I'm just going to give it a gentle tug and then I'm going to go into the vertical stitch and then bring up a loop with my green colored yarn then I'm going to go into the next vertical stitch 
bring up the green for my second, third, fourth. Then drop the green. I know that the purples line up. Give it a little gentle tug, not too hard. Then I'm going to bring up a loop with the purple. Loop with the purple. Then I need one of the blue. And then I'm drop the blue and pick up the gray. And then the gray was the last one where they lined up directly over each other. Then I'm going to check and see on the graph. So now on the graph, and again I'm on the third row, and I need two yellow. So it's a new color. I need to get my yellow color and bring that in. And according to the graph, I need two yellows. So I'm going to drop the gray, and then I'm just going to pick up the brown so that I can grab the vertical stitch. So now I'm going to go into the vertical stitch of the brown color. And I'm dropping the brown because I'm not going to use the brown. I'm going to pick up the yellow since yellow is the next color on the graph. Then I'm going to take and tie a knot to the gray. And then I need two of the yellows, so I have one. And then I'm going to go into the next vertical stitch. Oops, sorry, I have one. Now I'm going to go into the next vertical stitch. And then bring up a yellow. So now I have two of the yellow. Looking at the graph, I need, after the two yellow, I need three brown. So I can drop the yellow, and then I'm going to pick up the brown. So I have to find the brown back here. I know it's right there. So here's my brown. And then I'm going to go into the next vertical stitch. For the brown. And I need three of the brown. Then I can drop the brown, look at my graph, and I need five of the gray. So gray is right here. So I'm going to drop the brown. Actually, I'm going to pick up the brown just to bring up the next loop. Then I can drop the brown and pick up the gray. And then I'm going to bring up a loop with the gray. And with the gray, I need a total of five, so that's one. Two. Three. Four. And five. So now, I'm going to look at my graph again, and now it looks like I just need one blue here, and my blue is still way over here, so I'm not going to stretch that, it's too far, 
and this blue is attached to the skein. So I'm going to cut this blue that's over here and attach it to his clothespin and then come back. So now I have some of the blue on a clothespin and I can kind of just grab the yarn with the clothespin to keep it from getting tangled. Then my skein is freed up so I can take the blue from the skein of yarn and bring it over to where I need it. So now I only need one blue, so I'm going to take the next vertical stitch and bring up the blue colored yarn and then just tie a knot to the gray. Then I'm going to finish up the graph row three. I do, the rest are going to be brown. So I should have one, two, three, four, five left of the brown color. If you don't, then you know that something's wrong. So the brown color, let's see if I can stretch it across. It looks like I can. So I'm just going to stretch it since it's just right there. I'm going to bring it over. Drop the blue and then go into the next stitch for one. You have to fold the curl down if it's curling up. Two. Three. Four and the last stitch on the end. So you grab that last stitch on the end. Four, five. So now I would recommend counting your loops and for those of you that like to count going back across you can do that. The only reason I'm counting now is because I'm going to be showing you the color changes again so I'm just going to count to double check that I have 40 loops on here. So I do have 40 loops on mine, so I'm not going to be counting on the way back. I've already showed you how to do that. So you can count on the way back if you want to, like me. I just find it easier to do that. Okay, so now, remember, when you're starting the row going back, you always yarn over and then go through only one loop to start. So now, we're going to go back. So you yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and the first two colors are brown, so you know you're going through two loops of brown. You always look at the first two colors to determine when you're going to be making your color change. So they're still both brown, so it's going to be a brown. So you yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two. I still have two brown. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two. Two brown, yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two. So now you see that you have a brown and a blue. So you drop the brown, and then you pick up your blue colored yarn. Give a gentle tug on the blue colored yarn. And then you yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two loops. Now you have a blue and a gray. So you drop the blue, you pick up your gray. And then I give the gray just a gentle tug, and then I yarn over and go through two. Two gray, yarn over, go through two. Two gray, yarn over and go through two. Two gray, yarn over and go through two. Two gray. Now I have a gray and a brown. So drop your gray, look for the brown. Now remember we drug the brown across, so we want to go back to where we left the brown, pick up the brown, and then just, let me back up so you can watch. So we're here, the brown is back here. So pick up that brown, 
And then you don't want to pull too tight. Let's see if I can bring that in. You just pick up the brown. You don't want to pull too tight, just yarn over. And then you're just going to gently bring the brown yarn through too. Just like that. So you can see that the brown stretches just enough. It's not too tight. It's not warping the work. You don't want to do that. You just want it to rest there. And your work is still fine. So it's laying flat other than the curl at the bottom. That's how you want it. You don't want to pull it too tight. So now you have your brown color. And you can yarn over and you have two brown. So you go through two loops of brown. You have two loops of brown. Yarn over and go through two loops of brown. Now you have a brown and a yellow. So you drop your brown. Pick up, whoop, that's the loose yarn in. Don't grab your loose yarn in. Pick up the yellow. And then yarn over and go through two. And then yarn over and go through two. Now I have a yellow and a gray, so dropping the yellow. The gray is over here, so I'm going to pick up the gray. I'm going to, I always leave the loose yarn ends towards the back, not towards the front. And so I'm going to take my gray that's over here and stretch it across, just like I did for the brown, and then bring it through two loops. And you can see how the gray just lays there. It's not too tight. Then you just yarn over and go through the gray loops, two of them. Still have two gray. Two gray. Two gray. Two gray. Now I have a blue. A gray and a blue. So I'm going to drop the gray, pick up the blue, now this one's attached to a clothespin that I have closed in the clothespin, so I'm going to undo it. And then drop my gray, pick up the blue, yarn over and go through two. Now I have a blue and a purple, so I'm going to drop the gray, pick up the purple, yarn over and go through two. I have two purple, yarn over and go through two. Drop the purple, pick up the green, yarn over and go through two. You have two green, two green, go through two, two green, go through two. Now I have a green and an orange, drop the green, pick up the orange, yarn over and go through two. Now I have an orange and a brown, drop the orange pick up the brown. Now my brown is on a clothespin. Yarn over and go through two. Go through two. Go through two. Now I have a brown and a green. So my green is right here. Drop the brown. Yarn over and then go through two. I have two green. Yarn over and go through two. Now I have a green and a gray. Drop the green. Pick up the gray. Yarn over and go through two. Two gray. Yarn over. Go through two. Two gray. Yarn over. Go through two. Two gray. Yarn over and go through two. Now the last color. Drop the gray. Pick up the blue. And that's how easy color changing is. And then you just made all of your color changes back across. And we completed row three. Now we're ready for row four. So now we're going to look at the graph. And row four starts with three blue. And then we have two pinks. So you're going to need your pink colored yarn. And in my case, I'm using the coral. So I'm using a coral color right there. Okay, so now we're starting the fourth row. And so far I have one blue on there. And we need a total of three blue loops, according to the graph, on our crochet hook. 
So you're going to go into the next stitch. Let me get a close up so you can see the stitch that I'm working into. So you're going into the vertical stitch. Remember, all of the vertical stitches should be lining up. So I'm going to go into the vertical stitch. And like I said, I use my thumb to kind of help push the stitch on there. And then bring up a loop with the blue. So now I have two blues. I need three. So go into the next stitch and bring up a blue. So I have three blues. Now I need two pinks. So I'm going to go into the next stitch. And before I do that, we are not going to need the gray on this side anymore. So if you look at the graph here, the grays on this side are done. So I can go ahead and cut the yarn here and tie a knot with the gray since we're not going to be using any grays on this row. So what I'm going to do, since I have the blue yarn right next to the gray, I'm going to go ahead and cut the blue colored yarn. I mean, not the blue. Don't cut the blue. <laughs> cut the gray colored yarn. Leave a loose yarn end. And then this gray is attached to my clothespin. So I can go ahead and wrap the remaining gray on here until I need it again. And then you can see how you can just kind of put the, gray, the end of the gray into the pincher of the clothespin. And then just set this aside until you need it uh, again for the gray uh, colored yarn. So now the gray that you just cut, you need to tie a knot. So go ahead and tie a knot with the blue. So now you're ready to bring in the pink colored yarn. So I'm going to go into the next stitch and you can use pink or coral, whatever you want, what color you want for your unique blanket. I'm going to use my coral colored yarn. Just bring up a loop and then I'm just going to tie a knot to the yarn that's closest to it. And then I need two of the coral color for this row. So I have one. Now I'm going to go into the next stitch. And then bring up another loop with the coral. So I have two of the coral. Now I need two of the green according to the graph. So I'll drop the coral. And then here I just want to give it a gentle tug with the green to bring the stitches just a little bit closer. Not, it's pretty good. Then go into that vertical stitch, bring up a loop with the green, and then I need two green, so I'm going to go into the next stitch and bring up a green. And now, according to the graph, I need a blue. So here, you don't have much blue here, so I'm, and it's very close to the blue that we used here, so I'm just going to drag over the blue instead of cutting and tying a knot, because it's not that far. You can see that the blue is just right here. So I'm going to go into, first I'm going to, you can see that there's a little bit of a gap there, so I'm going to give a gentle tug with the brown and then go into that stitch, next stitch with the brown. Drop the brown color because we don't want brown, we want blue. And so we're going to take the blue, bring it across, and then just bring up a loop with the blue color. You only need one of the blue according to the graph. So now we're going to be making three of the orange color. So you're going to go into the next stitch, drop the blue, and then the orange is right there. So I'm going to bring that over. I just gave it a little gentle tug. I'm going to bring up a loop with the orange. So I have one. Go into the next stitch for two. And then the next stitch for three. 
Then I'm going to look at my graph again. So, so far everything's lining up. And again, make sure you're looking at the right row. So this is four. I have the three orange. The four green line up with the previous row and the two purple line up. So you can go ahead and do the green and purple exactly like the previous row. So now you can see how you have a little bit of a gap here from the green. So when you pick up the green, you just give it a gentle tug to kind of bring the stitches a little bit closer. You want to keep that distance between each of the sti stitches as close as possible to being the same. So then you go into the green, bring up a loop with the green, go into the next one for the green, next one, So we have four greens, then drop the green, and you can see how the purple has a little bit of a gap, so I'm going to pick up the purple, give it just a gentle tug, go into the purple, bring up a loop, go into the purple, bring up a loop, and now I might bring those stitches a little bit closer. See how you have a little gap right there? So I'm going to undo those and then just bring it a little closer to close that gap. And then you can hold it down here with your thumb and then bring up a loop. And then go into the next one and bring up a loop. So that's a little bit better. Then you can look at the graph again at four and then two. I'm on row four, and then I need two blue and then four gray. So I'm going to drop the purple, pick up the blue, and then I'm going to give a little gentle tug with the blue. Bring up a loop with the blue. Then we need two of the blue, so I'm going to give a tug with the gray. Let me give it a little bit more of a tug with the blue. There. Blue. And then I need the gray. Drop the gray because we need two blue according to the graph, so bring up a blue. Then we need four of the gray, so I'm going to give a gentle tug with the gray. And then you need four of the gray. There's one, two, three, and four. And then, according to the graph, we need three yellow. So I'm going to drop the gray, pick up the yellow, give a gentle tug with the yellow, go into the next stitch, bring up a yellow for one, go into the next stitch for two and three. Then According to the graph, we need two of the green. So now we need green over here, and my green is back over here. It's too far to stretch. So I have one attached to a clothes pin, and I have one attached to the skein. So I'm going to attach the one that's attached to the skein to a clothes pin. So now, after I have the three yellow, I can go ahead and go into the next stitch. I'm going to go ahead and get the brown yarn, since that's the next stitch, and put the crochet hook into that next stitch, drop the brown, because I need the green color. So I freed up my green color. I'm going to bring up a loop with the green colored yarn, and then tie a knot. 
with the yellow since it's next to it. And then you just need two of the green colored yarn. So I have one. Go into the next stitch and bring up a green. Now the next color is going to be blue. And if you look at the graph, we have blue here and then all of this blue. So you can use this blue and stretch it over here since it's not too far. And you're going to be using that a lot on that side, that blue on that side. So here is the blue right here. So you can see it's real close. I'm going to go ahead and go into the next stitch. And then I'm going to bring the blue over. And then bring up a loop with the blue. And then with the blue, you need, I'm just going to count on the graph. It looks like I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the blue. So I have one so far. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then you know you're going to switch back to the brown, and then you should have four brown left over if you did it correctly. So you go into the next stitch, and then look for the brown. And then I have the brown over here. So I'm going to go ahead, let me look at the graph and see, because I don't think we're going to need the brown over there. Yeah, looks like the brown is not going to be used over here, so I can go ahead and tie it off here, tie a knot, and bring it over here because we still have a lot of brown on this side. So here, you have the brown back over here. So I'm going to go ahead, give a gentle tug on the brown, and then you want to cut it. So you take and leave a little bit of a loose yarn end with the brown. And then you want to take and tie a knot. I'm going to tie a knot to the yellow yarn that's closest. And then that frees up the brown yarn. So now I can take and bring up the brown yarn. So this brown yarn is a, from the skein. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in the brown yarn from the skein of brown yarn. Bring up a loop. And then tie a knot with the blue right next to it. And then you should end with four brown. So there's one, two, three, and then the one on the end is four. So now, for those of you that like counting the loops, you can count the loops. And again, I'm not going to be able to count on the way back. Actually, I will count on the way back. And then you can watch as I color change, too. So I'm going to count on this one back, like I normally do. So this is how I normally do it. So then, I just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through one loop only. So that's one. two, three, four, five, whoop, I went through three loops, five, six, seven, eight, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, and then I had um, the blue from over here. So I'm going to stretch the blue over. I have 37. Thirty-eight, thirty-nine, and forty. So if you end with forty, then you know you did it correctly. And it was that easy. So we just finished row four.